Hi, this is Rod Saunders from Jew and Greek. Today I want to talk to you about John MacArthur. Now, if you've watched a lot of my videos, you know that I have issues with his views on the charismatic movement and Calvinism. But in this video, we're going to talk about his recent defiance of the mandate from the state of California that the churches must remain closed for worship services. Although he was a bit late to the party, I applaud his decision and I hope more will follow suit. John MacArthur is an extreme guy. He's always maintained an attitude toward morality that was in opposition to the continual secularization and moral degradation of society. And that's what I love about John MacArthur. We need ministers who are willing to take a stand in opposition to gay marriage, abortion, evolution, pornography, and immorality in general, rather than turning a blind eye to the world's influence on the church. I may not always agree with his suit and tie church style and hymns only approach to worship, but if that helps him to keep his church on the right path morally, then more power to him. What I object to is his insistence that the rest of the church conform to his views and his style. But that's another topic for another video. On Friday of last week, Johnny Mac's church, Grace Community Church, announced that they would resume holding services in defiance of the state mandate, which prompted speculation that the church would respond by cutting off the power to his church. But fortunately, Sunday came and went with no incident. So now the question is, how many churches will follow their example? But to really understand this in context, we have to go back a few months to April, when John MacArthur said this during a podcast with his sidekick, Phil Johnson. The clear demand of Scripture is to be subject to the powers that be because they're ordained of God. Romans 13. Romans 13. And First Peter talks about the same thing, honor the king and those who are in authority over you. God has set them in that authority. Um, the Apostle Paul tells Timothy that we're to be good citizens, that we're to be, live a quiet and peaceable life. We aren't rebels. We don't start protests. We don't defy the government. We conform. Um, we, we're submissive to the government as, as basically ordained by God. So that was an easy call for us. What would have made a difference would have been if this was persecution of the church. If all of a sudden the government decided to shut down churches as an act of persecution against churches, we would defy that. Because now you're into Acts 5, where Peter actually says, do we obey God or men? You say we don't meet. God says we do. We must meet. You say don't preach the gospel. We say we must preach the gospel. So when the government gets to the point where it basically persecutes the church, the church has to take that persecution and still do what God has commanded the church to do. The, the other thing that we talked about with the elders was if we defy this and if we say we're going to meet anyway, we run the risk of exposing people to this illness needlessly. And why would we want to do that? Because this is a health issue. This is a health crisis. And since, like any church, many of the people in our church are older, we, we wouldn't want to expose them to that. We, we've only had, as far as I know, and this was up to yesterday, we've only had one couple in our church in the Spanish ministry who actually got the coronavirus. But that couple, and not, not an older couple either, wound up in the hospital mm. because it was such a virulent uh, experience for them. So we wouldn't want to say, well, let them come to church and mingle with everybody else and let it be whatever is going to be is going to be. That doesn't make sense. We wouldn't purposely expose our people. That's not caring for your people. We wouldn't purposely expose them to that. And since we wouldn't have known, um, you know, we, we just said, look, we're not going to do that. So at the time, the concern for the well-being of the church took precedence over their right to gather for worship. At the time, the feeling was that they would go along with the mandate for a few weeks out of precaution. Then a few weeks turned into a few more weeks, and then a couple more months. By July, it was obvious that the virus wasn't nearly as bad as we'd been told, and this whole thing had been politicized and essentially turned into a power grab. So Johnny Mac had had enough and issued a statement of defiance along with an addendum. Within the addendum, it says, 
When the devastating lockdown began, it was supposed to be a short-term stopgap measure with the goal to flatten the curve, meaning they wanted to slow the rate of infection to ensure that hospitals weren't overwhelmed. And there were horrific projections of death. In light of those factors, our pastors supported the measures by observing the guidelines that were issued for churches. But we are now more than 20 weeks into the unrelieved restrictions. It is apparent that those original projections of death were wrong, and the virus is nowhere near as dangerous as originally feared. Absolutely. It's clearly not serious enough to keep the economy in recession and force the American people to jump through ridiculous hoops in order to try to live their lives as normally as possible. And that includes worship services. I'm glad to see John MacArthur take this bold stand against an unreasonable government mandate. I just wish he and others had been more supportive of Rodney Howard Brown back in late March when he chose to defy the mandate against church services in Florida and was even arrested for his stand. My friend Jason Peterson wrote about this at the time. I'll link to it in the description. Apparently, when it's a charismatic defying the government, it's reckless and irresponsible. But when it's a reformed guy doing it, it's bold and courageous. Whatever. I'm just glad that Christians are now coming around on this, recognizing that we've been played for political purposes, and there's no justification in prolonging this charade. Essentially, it was just a bad flu season, exacerbated by a lot of fear-mongering in an election year. And we've had quite enough. Give us our lives back. Let our kids go back to school. Let us return to the ball games and the concerts and the movie theaters without all of this pretense. And leave us alone when we exercise our constitutional right to worship. Thanks for watching and be blessed.